Boas pessoal, vamos lá começar mais um diazinho. Está mesmo, mesmo aí a começar. Falta um minuto para a corrida começar. Pontos importantes agora a ter em conta. Vamos apostar mais nestas, nestas três premissas. Ver se conseguimos melhorar os nossos trades. E principalmente fugir daqueles backs no final que nos arrebentaram o tempo, o lucro todo de ontem. Por isso, vamos lá ver como é que isto corre. E se vai melhor que ontem, não é? Até já. Market in play. With Flighty Bride giving chase, Fenny, Brooke and Clarina on the outside both settled prominently. Leader shifted right-handed at the first, but no harm was done. Princess Ruby retains her lead over Flighty Bride, Clarina and Fenny Brooke. With Ocean Reach settled in fifth ahead of She's All in Gold and Pop the Champagne. And all clenched up is dropped out last of the eight as they head off to race down the back straight, where the two flights of hurdles come up fairly quickly. The first of them is the second. Princess Ruby again darting out to the right, going across it. Ocean Reach lacked fluency and rather got in the way of She's All in Gold, as they close in on flight number three. Princess Ruby chased by Flighty Bride, about two and a half lengths between them. And then Clarina, And Fenny Brook from Ocean Reach, and she's all in gold and pop the champagne, and all clenched up remains the back marker, some 10 lengths behind the front running Princess Ruby on this long gallop between flights three and four. So Princess Ruby taking them to the end of the back straight in front by a couple of lengths over Flighty Bride. There's then a gap of three lengths to Fenny Brook and Clarina who were followed into the turn by Ocean Reach on the inside of She's All in Gold. Pop the Champagne remains held up one from the back and all clenched up continues to observe from the rear. Into the home straight on their way towards flights four and five. One before the winning post, the other after. Princess Ruby is the leader coming into the wings of the fourth flight, which she jumps about three lengths up on her nearest pursuer, Flighty Bride, Clarina on the outside of Fenny Brook disputing third, and then she's all in gold from Ocean Reach, Pop the Champagne, and still the back marker of a well-grouped field is all clenched up as they pass the judge on their way to the fifth. Princess Ruby chased by Flighty Bride, Fenny Brook, leader again wandering around going into the hurdle which had a bit of a knock-on effect in behind. Clarina just beginning to lose her pitch as they go into the next left-hander. Princess Ruby, only a length and a half in front of Flighty Bride, then Fenny Brook, Clarina, and she's all in gold on their outside, and then Ocean Reach and Pop the Champagne, and still all clenched up is held up last of all as they come to jump flight number six. Four from home. Princess Ruby again away to the right with Flighty Bride booting up the inside after jumping it to join issue. She's All in Gold has progressed into third. Pop the Champagne has made a swift move into fourth. Clarina is quickly backpedaling. All clenched up has moved off the back. Ocean Reach has also dropped to the rear as they level off to race down the far side with three to jump. Princess Ruby by a length with Flighty Bride now on the outside as they went over three out, pop the champagne, closing in third, then follows She's All in Gold, all clenched up into a closing fifth. Ocean reaches last of the leading group of six as they jump the penultimate flight and they've dropped Fenny Brook and Clarina by many lengths as they head to the rise on the far side. After jumping two out, it is Flighty Bride who's taken over. Pop the champagne a length down in second. She's all in gold into third. Longtime leader Princess Ruby in fourth. All clenched up is flat to the boards in fifth place. And being quite strongly ridden, they've dropped Ocean Reach as they swing left-handed out of the bat with just over a quarter of a mile to go. Flighty Bride will lead them off the home turn with She's All in Gold about to go second on the inside of Pop the Champagne. Princess Ruby all clenched up, fourth and fifth, but detached from the leading trio as they 
level for home. Just over a furlong to cover. One to jump. Flighty Bride from She's All in Goal. Flighty Bride went right. Awkward at the last. Pop the champagne. Made a mistake. Went back pedaling. Princess Ruby is staging a rally. Flighty Bride is picked up by She's All in Gold as they race into the final 100 yards and under Henry Brooks. She's All in Gold. Pushed out to win the opener comfortably. Flighty Bride in second. Market suspended. Ruby third clear of all clenched up ocean reach and pop the champagne. Oliver Greenall takes the first here at Stratford this afternoon. Henry Brook in the saddle, in Oliver's cuddle, colours. She's all in gold, the daughter of uh, Golden Horn, who's probably going to want a bit further over hurdles in time, has outstayed them uh, from the final. They're off. Mar Cabin Market well. in Walter play. Lee jumped okay in the centre. North wind showing plenty of early sparkle. So too J.R. Cabbage into the near side is the bell conductor as they work their way through the first full on course regular. The armed man is well to the fore. Red jacket noseband. That's to the right of picture. Strongbow's off the pace with Muta Nasek and also in company with those is Flavius Titus and Dick Datchery is one of the bat markers as they head towards the halfway point. It is the bell conductor near side with North wind for company. Then Cabib in the Purple and yellow, the armed man being pushed along. J.R. Cabbage in behind runners. Then Water of Leaf, Muta Nasek and uh, Flavius Titus, Dick Dactry. Doggily, doggily. Longbow is plum last with quarter of a mile left to go. They fan out across the track. Cabib and North Wind with the armed man every chance. Flavius Titus is to the extreme right. The bell conductor no! trying to get on terms. And Strongbow is attempting to make ground. And so too is Muta Nasek, who's looking for a way through. Inside the final furl and Water of Leaf. Here's Strongbow. And Strongbow's come from last to first. I'm out of here, man. The right time. North wind, Dick Dactry all giving chase, but Strongbow is pushed out to win in nice style. Strongbow is the winner. Mutanasek second place, North wind third. Market and suspended. Yeah, Sean last about that, that third run was no fluke. He's built on it. He's won here for Tim Easterby. Strongbow in the hands of David Allen. Tim's got a strong chance, obviously, down at Ascot, Winter Power, etc. throughout the week. Mutin Nasek has run well again, second place, up in the waist from that win here. Last time out, North wind gets there for David Byron and Connor Beasley. Dick Dashery uh, back in fourth place. Yeah, it was a good performance from this winner. Just travelled travel nicely, just waiting. The gap opened up for him when he needed it. And the fact that he stays further as well. He's to race over the extended market in play. Bet summer of lovely offers, conditional jockeys, handicap hurdle, Oxford blue tack beer. Dutch Admiral in the leading line as they reach the first. Nye Bevan close behind with the longest day on the outside also prominent. They're all over the first. Chieftain's Choice dropped out in rear. Ron Denui also amongst the back markers with Jessica Rabbit. And Billy's Angels also held up in the last quartet. Tack Beer has assumed control heading off into the back straight opening up a three length advantage over Dutch Admiral with Oxford Blue racing in third as they come to jump the second. Takbir jumped it four lengths clear. The others are all safely to the landing side. Dutch Admiral, Oxford Blue and the longest day chasing the leader. Then follows Cut and Run, Telekinetic and Shenandoah at the inside as they clear the second and final flight on the far side. So Takbir has gone five lengths clear as they breast the rise with Dutch Admiral leading Oxford Blue in the main body. They're being followed by the longest day and telekinetic with Shenandoah up the inner and then cut and run, settling in the mid division on the outside of Billy's Angel. Chieftain's Choice remains last of all. Nye Bevan's drifted back into the last quartet to race alongside Jessica Rabbit and Ron Denui. Takbeer by three lengths off the home turn, Dutch Admiral is giving chase, then follows Oxford Blue in the orange from the longest day, Telekinetic, Shenandoah up the inside, then follows Billy's Angel and Cut and Run as Takbeer leads them over flight number four. Dutch Admiral touchdown second, three lengths adrift of the leader, Shenandoah moving through to press Oxford Blue for third, there followed by Telekinetic. Is racing on the outside of the longest day. Billy's Angel cut and run. Nye Bevan on the outside. And then Jessica Rabbit, Ron Denui, and Chieftain's Choice remains held up last of all. Coming to jump the flight after the winning post. Number five, Tack Beer from Oxford Blue 
who jumped up into second on the outside of Dutch Admiral as they hit in. Oakley, the Oakley. Telekinetic runs fourth, Shenandoah is fifth, the longest day rounds out the leading half dozen, having covered a circuit. Nye Bevan, who's held several positions on the first circuit, is next, then follows Billy's Angel, Cut and Run is losing positions. Ron Denui and Jessica Rabbit and Chieftain's Choice are still held up off the pace as they jump the flight of hurdles along the side. That was number six, four from home, Tack Beer by three lengths. Uh, it looks as though the saddle may have slipped on Dutch Admiral. I think it went some time ago. Continues to chase the leader with Shannon Doa racing in third on the inside of Oxford Blue. Telekinetic, Nye Bevan, the longest day follow with Ron Denui trying to no! make a shade of ground. Cut and run has dropped back last of all as Tack Beer led the field over the third last. So running towards two from home, still well over half a mile to gallop. Tack Beer remains about three lengths in front of Dutch Admiral. Shannon Doer and Telekinetic jump two out next with Ron Denui now a closing fifth in front of Billy's Angel, Nye Bevan. Oxford Blues on the retreat. Jessica Rabbit is beginning to progress quickly. Chieftain's Choice is last of the main body and they've dropped a cut and run in the longest day. Still on this long gallop between the last two flights of hurdles, but the lead has changed hands. Tack Beer's been swallowed up by Shannon Doer and Ron Denui. Here, man. Rabbit on the outside of those moving into third and that trio beginning to break away. Telekinetic is fourth and ridden. Billy's Angel Chieftain's Choice is running on through beaten horses but the leading trio are clear off the home turn with less than a quarter of a mile to go. On the inside is Shannon Doa. Ron Denui travelling every bit as well upsides. A couple of lengths to the third horse as they come to jump the final flight. Little between the three with Jessica Rabbit holding every chance on the outside of Ron Denui. Shannon and uh, boxing on the inside. Billy's Angel running on in fourth into the final hundred yards. Ron Denui in the centre. Shannon Doer. Jessica Rabbit on the near side. Shannon Doer getting back up close home. Shannon Doer. Ron Denui. You talked it to last week under a seven pound penalty. Our slow mo on the line will confirm it. Ron Denui is second. Jessica Rabbit third, Billy's Angel fourth, and just behind that quartet, uh, the course specialist, Chieftain's Choice, who probably didn't find them going quick enough under his uh, hold-up ride. And Shenandoah has shown a really likeable attitude here under Jack Tudor. She only scraped home from a progressive rival at Utoxa to Jonathan last week, and she's had to work hard again here to win today. She's out battled the runner-up, hasn't she? Market in play. Half. Iconic Bell began well with tricorn black and white jacket to the inside, arrow of gold to the wide outer in the yellow colours, viaduct orange jacket takes a prominent role and a dulcimer follows. So through the first furlong it is viaduct with Jonathan Fisher now electing to take up the running with Viaduct, moves on by a couple of lengths. Tricorn second place, Dulcimer on the inside. Iconic Bell, Billy Garrity to the outer. And Arrow of Gold is last of the formation as they go around the paddock bend. So making the approach to the back straight. And um, Viaduct is the pace setter with Tricorn second place. The horse who has won his last three starts. Tricorn two lengths to... Dulcimer, the filly on the inside of Iconic Bell. Iconic Bell comes here in really good nick, having won the last five starts. And the back marker is the lightly raced Arrow of Gold, a winner last season. So they're on the far side of the track, less than a mile to go. And it is Viaduct who makes the running and has this lead of a couple of lengths over Tricorn with Iconic Bell third, Arrow of Gold and Dulcimer matching strides at the back end of the field on the approach to the end of the back straight with Viaduct still leading, Tricorn second place. And uh, reminders now for Dulcimer as they approach the end of the back. So it's Viaduct, Tricorn, Iconic, Bell, Dulcimer now. Oakley, Oakley. And they're on the swing away from the far side of the course with around about five furlongs left to go. And it is Viaduct on the side of the track leading with Tricorn second place, Iconic Bell, Red Cap in third. Dulcimer and Arrow of Gold follow as they make the approach to the turn in. And now Kevin Stott is asking Arrow of Gold for an effort at the top of the straight. So they're turning in just over three.
three furlongs left to go, and it is Viaduct in front by two lengths to Tricorn. Link Bell and Arrow of Gold both making efforts to the outside. Dulcimer is the one being left behind, and they're heading now towards the final quarter of a mile. And the strong travelling Tricorn right alongside the ridden Viaduct. Arrow of Gold and Iconic Bell are attempting to land a blow, but they've got a few lengths to find. And Tricorn has really gone for home here on the run down to the last furlong. Tricorn has opened up by about three or four lengths. Arrow I'm out of here, man. In second, Viaduct is in third, and then the one pace looking iconic bell. But it is Tricorn heading towards the finish with the race in the bag, and it's another win for Tricorn. That's four straight wins. Tricorn, the winner. Nice run from Arrow of Gold in second place. Market third, suspended. Four, and then Dulcimer. Right, in rampant form, Tricorn has made it four in a row in the colours of Lady O'Reilly in Jordan Trains, Andrew Mullen on board. Fishy three pound well in, the handicap will have another swipe, but he's in getting back to where he once was. And John Gosden had him, he was a 105 horse, there could still be a bit of room for manoeuvre. And off to race over. Mark, mark it in Manchester play. Bits. Betstival Beatman by ahead. Novice's handicap chase, running to the first of 12 fences. Get a book, a Clout de Mott are the front two. Rostello is close up. A Clout de Mott led over the first. Sativo took it well, jumped into second. Other end of the field, pardon me, was deliberate and now brings up the rear. With Badness, Backfires and Morlude held up well off the pace. The second is the open ditch halfway down the back straight, which they've all got over. A Clout de Mott leading Sativo over the rise towards fence number three with Getterbuck, Rostello, and Tidal Watch giving chase. After those is Secret Berry and Postman as they jump fence number three where Tidal Watch blundered and Rostello all but got rid of the rider who sat very tight. He had both legs on one side of the saddle at one stage, did Sam Twiston Davis. Didn't lose too many places as a result as a Clat de Mart leads them on the approach to the fences up the home straight, chased by Sativo with Secret Berry down the outside of Getterbuck and then Rostello, who races fifth ahead of Authorizo. Tidal Watch after that mistake has lost positions. Postman is next, then the held at Badness backfires, who's out wide of Morlude. Pardon me, remains last of all. Ending to the water jump for the one and only time, Sativo has taken over as they reach the fifth on the outside of a Clap de Mots. A couple of lengths to Secret Berry with Getterbuck on the inside of Rostello, Postman, Authorizo, Tidal Watch, More Lude. Badness backfires and Pardon Me is the back marker jumping the last fence up the home straight. That was number six. Now turning to the next two plain fences down the side. Sativo, who just lost a hind leg going into the bend, led by a length from Eclat de Mott with Secret Berry in light blue on the outside of Getterbuck. Third and fourth, Rostello between runners a length behind his next, then follows Postman, all out safely over fence number seven. Oggly doggly. Last on the side, Sativo from Eclat de Mott in the green with Secret Berry in third, Getterbuck in fourth, and then Rostello and Postman. As they all file over that one safely, they've covered a circuit, heading off down the back straight for the final time. Sativo by less than one length from a Clat de Mott, Secret Berry, Getterbuck, Rostello, then follows Postman, Morlud and Authorizo, the next two, then Badness backfires. Tidal Watch and Pardon Me are in the last pair as Sativo leads them over four outs. Jumped it about a length in front in rear Tidal Watch made another mistake and is now left well Don't! behind with pardon me for company as the leaders close in on three out the final open ditch. So Tivo rose in front of a clat de Mott with a whole host of horses in behind. Morlude is moving in on the outside of Secret Berry. Rostello and Getterbuck are in the thick of it. Authorizo and Postman and Badness Backfires are in touch and they're clear of pardon me. Sir Tivo over the second last... 
couple of lengths in front of Morlude on the outside of Getter Buck. Rostello, who hits her out, is only a couple of lengths behind the lead. Badness backfires. He's being nursed into the race by Robbie Dunn and takes... I'm out of here, man. ...turn behind Sertivo, who will lead them in with less than a quarter of a mile to gallop. One fence to jump. Sertivo from Getter Buck. Badness backfires now. Called upon for an effort, but Sertivo has drawn three lengths clear of the chasing group running down towards the 12th and final fence. Sativo from Badness backfires over in second, then Getterbuck, then follows Authorizo Postman and Rostello. It's Sativo with a four length advantage. Market suspended. Over the mile then with Market of Australia, in play. Pogo, Prince IG and Lopi Fernandez, the first quartet to get out of the starting stalls and have the early advantage. Straight in behind him, the Silver Jacket Palace Pier, he'd be about fourth or fifth in these early strides. Behind him, a dark jacket, a white cap of Sir Busker, the two greys. Uh, the Lord Glitters, the darker jacket, top rank in white and red, just preceding him. Then comes Accidental Agent, an orange cap towards the back of the field. And uh, last of all is Bless Him, as they already move down to the final five furlongs of the Queen Anne. The yellow jacket of Prince IG and the uh, green colours of Pogo stride along in front by around about two lengths. Might be a narrow third call for Palace Pier, his main market rival, Order of Australia, the Purple Cap. They are together in third and fourth places. The light blue of Regal oh, Reality oh, is next to Busca, Lupi, Fernandez, and top rank behind those are approaching the three marker now. Uh, still bless him in yellow and the orange cap of Accidental Agent towards the back of the field. Pogo in the green jacket, Kieran Schumach in the IG, uh, Prince IG, and Senny in the yellow, with now the silver jacket of Palace Pier nearest to us coming through to launch his challenge. He's being chased along though. Top rank is there, so Busca putting in a big run nearest to us as well. They come to the furl on Poland now. Palace Pier and Fred have the advantage. So Busca and Lopi Fernandez giving chase in second and third places. It's a two length lead for Palace Pier. Races towards the line and Palace Pier is the winner of the Queen Anne. Lopi Fernandez one's home. And Hilden Lee is in. And they're Market. off. The racing over Market the mile. And Kiskadi began slowly. Meanwhile, it is Motta Wajed who begins nicely up along the inside. Blue Honey is racing handily. And also well to the fore is Big Dutch. And on the wide outside, King Triton is coming over. And it's King Triton who leads them as they go on down the back from Motta Wajed, second place. Big Dutch is in third. Riches and Rubies, White Sleeves is just hidden behind the leading few with Baby Boo just off them as well then comes mr MacArthur as they go towards the end of the back straight come on hopkins in mid division followed by night terrors then comes mr zanetti and uh, around that turn off the pace kiskadi who's a slow starter is currently racing three wide hilden leads between horses and at the back there alban force is being driven along making the run now towards the turn in over half a mile left to go and it is king triton the leader lead to to motowajed in second place two lengths away blue honey is in third Third. They're turning in in front of Big Dutch who's being ridden to the inside is Riches and Rubies in the white sleeves. Up along the outer, Baby Boo trying to step forward and they have two and a half furlongs left Don't! to go. And it's King Triton being stalked by the favourite Motta Wajed. Blue Honey driven behind them. Then Riches and Rubies over on the fence. Night Terrace is staying on. Baby Boo is out wide. Big Dutchy has now backed down a bit. Then Kiskadi running down towards the last furlong. I'm out of here, man. Triton and Motta Wajed. These two duel for the lead. King Triton to the far side. Motta Wajed is on the near side. King Triton and Motta Wajed as they go close home. King Triton is holding Motta Wajed. King Triton makes all. Motta Wajed second. Market suspended. The those two. And it's tight for third. Blue Honey in company with Riches and Rubies. Yeah, tight for third, but no doubt about the winner. King Triton shedding the maiden tag the third time of asking for Roger Varian and Jack Mitchell. Roger won't be here today, but we'll try and get a word with Jack in due course. Motto Ajid was second for him, Haggis and Dean O'Neill. Well clear of Blue Honey and Riches and Rubies. Preparing an official photo for third place. 
Yeah, I think when Noble Patron was withdrawn, these two were definitely the horses, um, the form horses on paper. But this was a game performance from King Triton. Uh, he'd had two starts before this. He was green on his debut at Kempton in March, and then he'd been around six lengths and two necks, but Chepstow over 10 furlongs when we last saw him. So dropping back in trip today, we've shown a really game-like lassitude, and you know, there's plenty of drama down. Away, Market suspended. Get away. The coffee maker is one of the first to run us away. in play. in a prominent position. Also, the gatekeeper, the organisers up there as well. Katura in yellow, vintage clarets nearest to us. Uh, the Acropolis, Ebro River and Angel Blair in prominent positions. Tolstoy out the back early on with Eldrick Jones. On the extreme right is Berkshire Shadow in the red colours. Uh, with this as well is secret strength towards the back of the field. But they're already heading down to halfway. Coffee maker, the blue, uh, the lighter blue on the left is the organizer, Gisburn with those, and then comes the gatekeeper in a light blue jacket, Angel Blur in the center, De Babi, about five from the right. A oggly doggly. A light blue jacket. Ebro River and Tolstoy, the Acropolis all over on the extreme left. Vintage Clarets nearest the grandstand side running well with Katura also getting into it. But they head down towards the furlong pole. This is wide open. Ebro River in a silver jacket coming through with the Acropolis. A uh, vintage clarets nearest to us. Katura's there. Boxer Shadow in the white flying home as well. Masetto in the center, but it's Boxer Shadow and Ashim Murphy have won. Eldrick Jones might have got second position to vintage clarets. Market suspended. Those, then Ebro River and Debab. Prominently, Poets Magic, and to the outside is Kodiak Brown Bear with uh, the leaders followed by Weatherfell, that one a little bit keen in the early strides. Midnight Bride's got a pitch to the wide outside, Mashan in mid-division. Tracking the leaders is Higher Kingdom is on the inside running rail. The last couple are Tad Reeb and Swiss Knight. They're on top of the first turn, and it's Kodiak Brown Bear and Weatherfell, one and two. Paris Mountain back in third position, followed by Poets Magic, who's about three parts of a length further back in fourth. Another length to Midnight Bride and Higher Kingdom. Those two running together, Mashan, green sleeves to the inside of Tad Reeb and the bat marker is Swiss Knight. Preparing to turn into the straight, halfway through the contest, it's Kodiak Brown Bear, Andrew Mullen by Oggly a Oggly. quarters of a length to weather fell. Poets Magic, Dark Blue Jacket now staking a big claim, challenging to the outside. Higher Kingdoms behind runners, Midnight Bride needs a gear change. Paris Mountain, the grey, is up against the running rail. They've got a furlong and a half left Don't. to go. Poets Magic kicking for home with a one and a half length lead. Midnight Bride, Tad Reeb on the wide outside and Higher Kingdom coming with a big run. They're at the furlong marker, Tad Reeb to the outside. Side. Higher Kingdom edging right. I'm out of here, man. Bride just perhaps, perhaps checked in the run. It's Tad Reeb and Higher Kingdom. Tad Reeb by about a length to Higher Kingdom. Suspended. Right. Tad Reeb has won for Mark Johnson's Shadow of the State and Dane O'Neill. It beats in second place Higher Kingdom for David O'Mara and Shane Gray. And the first two nicely clear for the rest. Paris Mountain, a big run to snatch third, it would appear. But yeah, three year old. 10 pound weight for age alliance is really when mark johnson's and well three rows in general middle of june they can really take advantage of that yeah we were mark market in play right widest of all with Between the Waters at the inside. And Pirate Sam makes a blunder at the first. Well sat by Brendan Powell. He's taking quite a strong hold in behind the leading quartet. As Canny Tom comes through to join Franz Clammer over the water. Between the Waters and Silvretta Schwartz are prominent. Then the hard-pulling Pirate Sam and Old Sod from Alexander the Grey, Mackie D and finally Orsino. Canny Tom led outright. At fence number three, heading Franz Clammer on his outside as they turn left-handed onto the next two plain fences. With Between the Waters on the inside of Silvetta Schwartz disputing third. And then follows Old Sod on the outside of Pirate Sam as they jump the first on the side. Franz Clammer back in front of Canny Tom as they head on towards fence number five. Franz Clammer, Canny Tom, three lengths to between the waters. Then Silvretta Schwartz over fence number five. Orsino continues to be held up right at the back of the field. Alexander the Grey and Mackie D remain in the last trio. Old Sod in front of them. 
heading off down the back straight through the two-mile start. To fence number six, Franz Klammer on the outside of Canny Tom. And there are a couple of lengths in front of Between the Waters, who runs third. Silbretta Schwarz is fourth. And then follows Pirate Tom and Old Sod and Mackie D and Alexander the Grey. And finally, Orsino, who'd be about 10 or a dozen lengths off the leading pair. Coming over the open ditch down the back, Franz Klammer, Canny Tom. And all out over it safely in behind, Between the Waters and Silvretta Schwarz. They're disputing third place, two and a half lengths off the front pair, four lengths in front of Pirate Sam, who has two lengths in hand on Old Sod and Mackie D as they jump the final plane fence in the back straight. The last two to cross it, Alexander the Grey and Orsino. So still well spaced out as they approach the end of the first circuit. Canny Tom on the inside of Franz Klammer, matching strides. Nearly three lengths in front of Between the Waters. Silvretta Schwarz is fourth. Pirate Sam turns in fifth, approaching the fence that he nearly came down at on the first circuit. Old Sod and Mackie D follow, then Alexander the Grey and Orsino as they arrive at fence number nine. Franz Klammer from Canny Tom on the inside. No mistakes made at the ninth fence. Between the Waters continues to chase the front pair in front of Silvretta Schwarz as they arrive oakley, at the jump for the final time. Franz Klammer touchdown just in front of Canny Tom and all out over it safely in behind. Orsino not especially fluent in rear. Coming to jump fence number 11, Franz Klammer, Canny Tom in the air together from between the waters with Silvretta Schwarz over in fourth and Pirate Sam from Mackie D who's gone past Alexander the Grey, Old Sods drop back one from last as they turn down the side. Orsino three lengths off the back if anything else continues to bring up the rear. To fences 12 and 13 down the side, it was Franz Klammer who rose marginally in front of Canny Tom with Between the Waters still tracking them in third place under Paige Fuller. So Vretta Schwartz rounds out the leading quartet as they jump the final fence down the side where Pirate Sam has come to grief. Come to grief at no! the fence on the side. Horse is quickly up, so too is the rider as they head off into the back straight for the final time with forward to jump. Franz Klammer leads Canny Tom. Silvretta Schwartz and Between the Waters have closed in on the front pair with Alexander the Grey making headway from off the pace along with Mackie D. Old Soddy struggling as they jump four from home. The last to clear it remains Orsino. So they're on their way towards the open ditch. Three from the finish. Franz Klammer from Silvretta Schwartz. And between the waters with Canny Tom, fourth going over three out, but losing ground. After making headway, Alexander the Grey's now been ridden, but Mackie D now starts to make inroads on the leaders. Heading towards the last on the far side, two from home, Franz Klammer's chased by between the waters. I'm out of here, man. Over two out, there'll be a couple of lengths between them. Silveretta Schwartz looks to be weakening in third. Mackie D's moved into fourth. Canny Tom's on the retreat, now overtaken by Alexander the Grey who himself is making no impression. Orsino has never sighted the front rank and doesn't look like doing so as Franz Klammer with a three-length advantage turns into the home straight with Between the Waters seemingly the only possible danger. Silvretta Schwartz is ten lengths off the front pair in third and then comes Mackie D with Orsino staying on through beaten horses but Franz Klammer arrives at the final fence. Ten lengths clear Between the Waters fading back in second. Silvretta Schwartz and Orsino and Mackie Deer behind those, but Franz Klammer for Peter Pritchard and Alexander Thorne run out a wide margin winner. Market suspended. The Between the waters held on to be second. Silvretta Schwartz was third. Then came Mackie D and never nearer Orsino, Old Sod and Canny Tom. They're off. They race away for the King Stand Stakes. Five Markets. Is the trip. Fast Market out, in uh, play. From the stores is Winter Power.
And also up there in the early strides is Ornate Kea Moro's up there with the cheek pieces as well. Yellow sleeves of Maven in a prominent position. Batar should be about fifth early on. Liberty Beach and Glamorous Anna showing good pace. Hacklem Express is behind these. They're going very fast. Some of these sprinters at the back are already outpaced. Kea Moro leading. Batar the blue and white on the cap. On the left is Glamorous Anna. Towards the extreme right then is Winter Power. A blue and white jacket. Oakley, Oakley. From her. Maven is behind these. Then Kings Lynn from Liberty. Beach and behind those is Harris Barr as near as two as Winter Power. Batars coming to do this issue this pair together. Liberty Beach, Acclam Express behind those. The pink jacket of Oxford is running on, but it's Batars in front to the pink colors of I'm Oxford here, man. the center. Oxford now coming through with Kieran Fallon to take it up and beats Arasibo to second extravagant kid and Batars and keep it market uh, suspended. Luna, Liberty Beach behind those. Hey. Chalet missed it a fraction and uh, on settling down it is Tussarok with Cassio right there to the inside. Caesar Belzam, Red Rosario, Hostelry to the outer. El Del Bar is wide on the course in the yellow and black colours but takes a prominent role. Chalet's off the pace with Trinity Lake and outrun the storm and they're now on top of that far turn. It's Tussarok, Red Rosario and El Del Bar three wide. Cassio Blue Jacket back in fourth place being chased by Caesar Belzam, Hostelry. Trinity Lake, Chalet and outrun the storm is the trailer. Making the run down the side now towards the last half mile. Two Siroc has got El Del Bar for company. Red Rose Zorro. Red colours about a length down. Cassio shaken up to the running rail. Oakley, Oakley. Arm, sheepskin, noseband, black jacket between horses. Trinity Lake to the inside. Hostelry is three deep as they come down the straight. Chalet's being driven along and outrun the storm is under pressure. They're now about to hit the final two furlongs. El Del Bar, Cassio, no! Tussarok, Caesar Belzarm, Red Rose Zorro between runners. Making the run down towards the last furlong and Caesar Belzarm is putting it to Cassio. Those two now fight out to the finish for the lead. They're about two lengths in front of Trinity. Here, man. Slice of the action as well. It's Cassio Caesar Bell's arm. Here comes Trinity Lake down the outside. Three of them go into the line. Over on the far side, Cassio between runner Caesar Bell's arm. Near side, Trinity Lake. Three way go for the judge to solve. Market suspended. Far side between horses, Caesar Bell's arm and near side, Trinity Lake. Yeah, really good finish. Far side was Cassio. Caesar Velsam and Trinity Lake as they come to the line. Amy, you've got a better pitch. What's your thoughts? Oh, it's fair. tight, isn't it? Between... Caesar Velsam hasn't won. It's far side Cassio, this side Trinity Lake. Yeah, it was heads up, heads down. Uh, I'd like to see it still before putting my neck on the line there. We don't need to do that. We'll wait for the judge to separate. Half. First to show in front is Affable, making the run to the bottom bend, closely followed by the grey nail down. Right in behind them, the stable companion's big challenge, and time makes it fine, the green cap. Second grey is El Sam, then get back in Paris as they climb up towards the straight first time. It's Affable and Billy Lee making the running, showing just over a length in front of Nail Down and Gary Carroll. In third place is Big Challenge and Dylan Brown McMoneagle, the quartered cap. Time makes it fine next, then Alwa Sam, and he knows no danger. Striped jacket of Get Back in Paris, and then But I Like It. A couple of links to Blackland Princess, and held up as Knuckles McGinty. Straightening up with the circuit in front of them. It's affable showing the way to nail down. Big challenge, time makes it fine. First four tracked by Alwa Sam, and he knows no danger. In between horses is Get Back in Paris. The final three circuit to go. But I like it, Bracklin Princess Knuckles McGinty making the turn to head towards the halfway stage. And it's affable and nailed down, followed by big challenge. Alwa Sam railed well on the inside of time makes it fine, then get back in Paris, making the downhill run towards the halfway stage. Oakley, Oakley. Affable is taken on by big challenge. The pair opening up with three length advantage over nailed down and Alwa Sam and then time makes it fine. Get back in Paris, and he knows no danger. Driven along as but I like it. A gap to Knuckles McGinty, who relegates Bracklin Princess to be the back marker. They're starting to get spaced out. Little between Big Challenge and Naffable. 
three, four lengths clear of nail down, nudged along in third. Alwa Sam next, then time makes it fine. No! Back in Paris, and but I like it. Heading to the final half mile. In the Strand Hill Caravan Park, a splendid location for staycation claiming race, and it's affable. Wrestling back, a small advantage over big challenge. They're chased up by Nail Down, who's keeping at it in third. Alwa Sam next on the inside of time makes it fine. Climbing for the home turn. Affable and big challenge. Not much. I'm out of here, man. Nail down Alwa Sam. Time makes it fine and get back in Paris. Long way cleared of Knuckles McGinty. Their heads turned for home. Furling and a half to go and big challenge has got the better of Affable as they hit the straight. Then nail down. On the outside as time makes it fine and then Alwa Sam. They're racing to the final furlong and it's big challenge. Chased by stable companion. Time makes it fine. Who's whittling away on the outside and then nail down and inside the final hundred yards it's big challenge and dylan brown mcmonigle this horse is overcoming a long layoff here for james mccauley second is market suspended five. quite the result for the trainer e. Vega behind those at this early stage. Thunder Moon in red and yellow at the back of the field. Wembley and the Grey Highland Avenue also towards the rear as Ontario leads. A red jacket Namus in second. About a length and a half away in white. Poetic Flair running in third. A white cap green jacket Lucky Vega with battleground. is rather keen in blue and orange. Mustard Aff right next to him in blue and white colours and then Chindu is behind uh, Wembley. La Barossa together with this at this stage. High Avenue is the back marker. La Barossa in company with him and Maximal green and pink colours is halfway down the field. But Ontario has skipped clear as they go past the four furlong marker. That was halfway. He leads by five lengths. Namus in second place. Poetic Flair behind him running in third. And then Mostadaf on the Oakley, back. Oakley. Narrowly in fourth place over the green and white colours of Lucky Vega. Battleground between those. Maximal Wembley, Chindit, Bullis behind those. And then Thunder Moon as they level up for home. On the right is the Grey Highland Avenue. New La Barossa behind that. Now they get past the early pace. No! Namus leading to Poetic Flair and the white and purple is past the question. Mustard out short of room against the running rail. Maximal coming down the centre with a challenge. Lucky Vega still there as well. But it is Poetic Flair who has shot clear inside the final furlong here with Kevin. Come out of here, man. Leading by three lengths to Lucky Vega battleground. Maximal behind those. He's been busy. He's very talented. He's very tough. Poetic Flair has won in great star. Lucky Vega just second to battle. Market suspended and then Highland Avenue. gone without Asjad. Mar market in play. And they've gone without number two, Asjad. That horse was withdrawn. More to follow on that one. So through the first of seven furlongs, and it is Tromso and Yajari, the two horses in the yellow jackets with the inside runner Tromso just showing the way to Yajari. Royal Partnership, Camerata, the newcomer in the stripes, is following. Chased by Love Sensation. Debated is further back. One not really settling. His heart throbbed to the inside in the pale jacket. Out wide is Bold Territories. And the back marker is Maltby Raider. Making the run down the side of the track now towards the last half mile and the turn in. And it is a Tromso shows the way. In second spot is Yajari. Now Tromso is running wide into the street. Oakley, Oakley. Tromso very wide of Yajari. Tromso coming down the center of the track. Yajari to the far side. Camaratas chasing the leaders with about three or four lengths to find on those. Royal Partnership has been pushed along and then so too no! debated. Now Tromso is coming back to join Yajari as the end of the final quarter of a mile. Yajari far rail now trying to move on from Tromso. Camarata is back in third. Bold Territory is trying to stay on then Royal Partnership. They're out of here, the man. Furlong. It's Yajari in front. Tromso in Second position is going all over North Yorkshire. Back in third is Camarata and going close home. It's Yajari and Liam Jones in front will not be denied. It's Yajari. Good performance from Yajari. Tromso second. Camarata Market and suspended. Both cross the line together for other places. Testing the early lead. The Blue Panther Shahada and Forgetful Agent racing through the field to pick him up at the end of the first furlong. Forgetful Agent goes on from the Blue Panther, Nosebandon Shahada. 
Ramon Di Loria, last time course winner, close up in fourth. They're tracked by Tar Heel, and I know I can, and dropped in is even flow. Three and a half furlongs to go as they head for the halfway stage. And it is the Blue Panther taking over the lead from Forgetful Agent. Tar Heel close up on the inside of a pushed along Ramon De Loria. And driven in between horses is Shahada as they head for the home turn. And then I know I can and even flow towards the rail. Heading for the final turn, a furling and a half to go, and it's the Blue Panther shifting on from Tar Heel, even flow. Then Shahad and Ramon de Loria. I know I can, gone well clear of forgetful agent in Ogley, the Ogley. final furlong. And the one to catch is the Blue Panther and Sam Ewing, five clear, and is not for catching. Even flow is run on into second place, and then Shahada, the Blue Panther, no! won by a big margin for Market even flow. suspended. Shahada. All about to start here at Sligo tonight with no stalls and uh, I'm out of here, man. They're in by, by Rashoon over towards the left, the grey colours coming across. Frankie trying to restrain golden rules. Rochester House is also getting handy along with last year's winner, Kerr de Leon. The red cap of Mancini to the outside on the right. That is Lucky Deal. Franny Norton with Postilio just in behind that one. Golden Rules is very keen just chasing the leaders. The black and white half jacket, untold story, the blue colours white face followed by Rhea Paw. And then racing in about eighth position, the red colours, Holly Doyle on Lost Withiel. That one is being followed by Elysian Flame and Just Hubert sitting in midfield at this stage. A yellow cap followed by Ireland Brave. And then towards the back of the field, Rachel Blackmore on the favourite. Kate Gentleman has only got four or five behind at the moment. Is back there with Royal Illusion. Dalton Highway, the best turned out winner. Lethal Steps and Solo Saxophone is the back marker in the Ascot Stakes. They've completed their first four furlongs. And as they do so, it is Rochester House and Sylvester de Souza leading the way to Mancini and Richard Kingscott in second spot. Stable companion Rashoon is in third position. And they're being followed by Golden Rules with Lucky Deal to the outside. Golden Rules hasn't really settled. Untold Story and Oshin Murphy is over on the inner with Thor Hammer Hansen and Kerr de Leon next. For trainer Alan King, Postilio is to the outside, racing in about eighth position. Los Withiel is on the inner. And they're followed by Rhea Paw and Adam Kirby. Elysian Flame is next as they come to the turn at the end of the home straight. And then just Hubert. Ahead of MC Muldoon. That's uh, running in about 11th position at this stage. 11th or 12th ahead of Ireland Brave. Kate Gentleman. And they've completed a mile now. And then Royal Illusion and the back three. Dalton Highway, Jamie Spencer and Lethal Steps. And Solo Saxophone is last of all about 15 lengths behind the leader. As they run away from us. And it is Rochester House that has the advantage still to Mancini in second position with Rashoon in third. Not much change up front. Still being followed by Lucky Deal. The Mark Johnston runners one and four at this stage. Then Untold Story. Untold Story and uh, Golden Rules. Coeur de Leon in the next position still with uh, Los Withiel and Postilio is running to the outside of that one. In behind uh, Postilio, still Rayapore, Elysian Flame wearing cheek pieces on the inside. Ben Curtis, Mick and David Easterby, Ryan Moore and MC Muldoon following. One of three in the race for Willie Mullins. Royal Illusion is back there with Just Hubert, Island Brave, Kate Gentleman still towards the back with Lethal Steps, Dalton Highway and Solo Saxophone last of all. As they now have a mile to run in the Ascot Stakes. And it is Oakley, Oakley. Now, still with the advantage by about a length to Mancini in second spot. Reshun is in third. No major moves from anything in behind just yet. Lucky Deal continuing to sit in fourth place as they run towards their final six furlongs and on their way back to us now. In midfield still is Los Withiel. Los Withiel is running in company with Coeur de Leon and Postilio Elysian Flame. MC Muldoon yet to make a move, neither just Hubert and Island Brave still towards the back with Royal Illusion as the lead is still being held by Rochester House. Rochester House takes them inside their final five with Mancini in second. Rashoon, Lucky Deal. They are still one, two, three and four. Golden Rules is next with Untold Story. Coeur de Leon, Los Withiel sticking to the inside, followed by Elysian Flame. Postilio to the outer. Then Rayapur, Just Hubert, Island Brave, Royal Illusion, no! MC Muldoon, Kate Gentleman, Dalton Highway, Lethal Steps. Solo Saxophone is struggling in last as they run towards the three, turning for home in the Ascot Stakes. It's still Rochester House that has the lead to Mancini. Where are the challengers coming from? Lucky Deal and Rashoon in behind. Then Untold Story. Postilio trying to come from the back of the field. Kate Gentleman is uh, 
trying to make some ground, but has got an awful lot to do from where he is inside the two. And now Golden Rules is challenging under Frankie de Tori. Reshoon, Rochester House weakens. Mancini down the outside. Kerr de Leon, Elysian Flame on the inside. It's up for grabs. They run inside the furlong. And it is Reshoon who's battling away here. MC Muldoon is now flying down the outside under Ryan Moore. Reshoon chased all the way by MC Muldoon as they run close to the finish. I'm out of here, man. MC Muldoon, here comes the line. Reshoon to MC Muldoon in the Ascot Stakes. Market and then suspended. Elysian Flame, Golden Rules. Kate Gentleman was running on only into fifth. And then Untold Story. Bem, e por hoje foi tudo, foi as corridas que fiz, não vou fazer mais, só fiz estas 17 corridas, foi um bocadinho melhor, foi, foi lucrativo, comparativamente ao ontem, fizemos menos erros, é o que me parece, pelo menos fizemos menos erros, um, agora é ir ver, vou agora rever todas as corridas, ver o que posso melhorar e que estamos aqui na luta, por isso, força! E portem-se bem, até já. Bem, agora aqui no, no pós, no pós-análise das corridas, podemos ver que tivemos, tivemos saldo positivo. Tivemos saldo positivo de 8,38. Cometemos muito menos erros do que ontem. Perdi aqui esta stake porque falhei a leather. Uh, <risos> falhei a leather na altura de fechar, senão o, o, o prejuízo tinha sido menor. Não entrei tanto no final, o que ajudou, o que ajudou bastante a não, a não perder tanto dinheiro, a não mandar fora. Foi mais ou menos isto aqui, as corridas, o lucro médio é de 50 cêntimos, não é muito, mas eu gostava de conseguir para aí um terço da stake, pelo menos para já, era bom, se tirasse um euro em cada uma, com uma, com uma stake de 3 euros, Acho que era um bom profit, pelo menos por agora. Mas mesmo assim, 50 cêntimos, bem bom. Mas vamos lá ver aqui agora as notas finais. É assim, em relação às corridas longas, é aquelas que me têm estado a fazer mais confusão, porque muitas vezes tem muita, muito cavalo e eu não sei o que é que de fazer. Por isso, se calhar, o melhor era, primeiramente, se calhar, começar a a focar em dois ou três cavalos, simplesmente e fazer ter, tanto trades em back como em lei. Caso não haja nenhum cavalo que vá na frente com uma odd alta, porque eu também achei muito interessante fazer umas free bets nos cavalos que iam na frente com odds altas, porque aquilo paga bastante, como são odds de 20 e 30, aquilo paga, como se pode ver na, na corrida, nas corridas anteriores, vai lá estar em destaque. Um, vai aparecer, porque vai aparecer odds altas na frente e aí por vezes aquilo muito provavelmente vai descer e se fizermos lá umas freebets, aquilo basta a odd de 30 passar para, para 20 ou para 10 já, já está logo um, um euro ou dois, o que acaba por ser muito dinheiro. Por isso, sempre que não houver se calhar um, um cavalo, um rafeirão na frente, é preferível, se calhar, ir focar em dois ou três cavalos de, que possam vir para ganhar do que andar a fazer frivetes. É aqui a grande dúvida para trabalhar as corridas mais longas. É essa. Em relação ao resto, tanto como, contra, como o lei. O lei é cavalos que têm uma má postura, que vão mais para trás, é, mais para, é melhor para fazer lei. Aqui é exatamente o contrário. Um cavalo com uma boa postura, bem colocado e principalmente se tiver procura do mercado em back, provavelmente vem para a disputa, se estiver ali na zona, na zona de fora ou se for uma corrida mais longa, se estiver protegido por o cavalo que está à frente a cortar o vento, também é boa opção. E outra coisa que eu reparei que, foi, que muitas das vezes quando dois cavalos estão na disputa final, a odd tanto balança, vem, vai lá acima, vem cá abaixo e anda muitas vezes por ali. 
pode ser boa opção fazer um lay baixo, uh, 1,30 ou 1,40 e depois vir fechar a 2, que ele facilmente vem fechar, ou então aproveitar o fazer backs altos, backs a tipo acima de 3, acho que, que já acaba por ser de valor. Atenção, para não entrar tarde demais, para simplesmente não apanharmos a última subida. É o que pode acontecer, mas se por acaso conseguirmos apanhar, se conseguir apanhar um back a 3 e ele vem depois outra vez para um e é um bom profit, acaba facilmente dá ali uma, uma stake de lucro. 2. Foi assim os insights que eu tirei. Por isso, agora vamos ver como é que isto continua, se conseguimos manter em lucro ou não, porque muitas vezes isto é controlar, podemos ganhar pouquinho, mas se controlarmos o, as perdas, aquela, aquelas apostas no final malucas, acho que dá bem para controlar o, o lucro e não sair, pelo menos em, em rede no dia, e certamente não estouramos a banca. Por isso, pessoal, fiquem bem e vamos ver até amanhã como é que corre amanhã.